Hello, hello, this is Roberto and this is the HVAC is my channel. Today we're going to be talking about effective area and free area, along with other concepts that we have whenever we're selecting a supply register, return grill, or a diffuser. All right, all right, let's, so let's get into it. So we're going to start with the uh, so with the effective area. So what is effective area? We're going to put that as an FK. So let's put that in here. So F A K. Okay, A K. So this is going to be effective area. Effective area. Okay. So the other concept is going to be AF. So AF, it is free area. Free area. Okay. So a very easy way to remember or to know the difference are the units. Remember that the units will tell you which one is which. So we're going to put that in white so that way it's noticeable. So effective area is going to be in square feet, whereas a free area is going to be in square inches. Okay, square inches. So we're going to put that like this. Um, we can always put like square inches like this. See, square inches or we can always put this like this and inches squared see it's it's, it's going to be the same so that's one of the differences effective area is in a square feet and free area is going to be inches squared all right the second difference is going to be about the friction so we're going to put that in red so in effective area we are measuring also we are including friction includes friction so includes friction okay so friction there we go in here doesn't include let's put in here no friction there we go no friction it doesn't include the friction okay all right so now what am i referring to includes friction so now let's continue with the effective area so the effective area is actually the area of the register, diffuser, or a grill that the air uses. Okay, so we're talking about the air. The air uses to follow or to flow through to flow through it, including friction. So in other words, this is going to be lab tested. So if we have our register right here, see, my air is going to be passing by. Of course, see, air is passing by, it's passing by, see, all the air, yeah, but it includes the friction when it's hitting the blades, so it, since we cannot do that, the manufacturer already do this test in the lab, so that's why that value is already provided in the tables so in other words you're not going to be able to calculate this number which is ak and also this ak is a very popular number popular um, area that the manufacturer uses so see i'm putting an ak in here i'm, I'm going to put this in pink since uh it's very important so when we go to the tables you're going to be able to see ak in every single register so for example we have a register in here eight by four so the ak is 0 0.090 so if we go to 12 by six you're going to be able to see the another ak other people call it ak factor but ak is going to be 0.225 and sometimes you're going to be able okay let's try to calculate this okay we're going to take this and this and then do the math not really because this is lab tested so from now on you're going to be able to tell them effective area is uh, it's obtained in the laboratory by the manufacturer okay so we, we cannot calculate that they do it by the cfm by measuring the velocity and therefore they obtain the ak factor all right so this is called the effective area and also other people call it to we're going to put this as green let's put this in green other people call it also net area see net area okay and this is uh tested in the lab tested or obtained obtained in the lab okay in the lab by manufacturer 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 all right so this is an accurate number because this includes the friction so in other words 
how do you obtain the CFM? So the CFM actually is going to be a, the following formula. So the CFM is going to be AK factor C, effective area, times the velocity. So in other videos, we saw the velocity that the manufacturer recommends and ACA recommends was 700 for supplied registers. So in other words, if we have this, um, we want to obtain, for example, the CFM for a below for this grill let's let's put an example in here so we're gonna select this register so that's gonna be a 10 by 10 by 6 so for a 10 by 6 what is my AK value the AK value was obtained in the laboratory it's gonna be 0.85 and remember the the difference is that this is a square feet and this is a square inches so my CFM is gonna be equal to 0.85 times velocity so what is the velocity that the manufacturer recommended it was 700 fpm for supplied registers so in other words this is going to be 0 0.185 times 700 fpm so 700 fpm and that's going to give me total value of uh, we're going to go to my calculator so in the calculator i'm going to put these numbers <clears throat> okay so it's going to be this plus this and that's going to give me 129.5. Okay, so that's going to be 129.5 CFM. So in other words, they just round it up to 130. And as you can see, we have 130 right there. See? 130 CFM. So in other words, that's how they calculate the CFM. All right, so that's the effective area. And if you want to know the definition, the effective area is the area of the register diffuser or grill that the air uses, the air uses to flow through to flow through it through to the each register, including friction. There you go. That's the free area. Now we're gonna go ahead for the free area. And then what is the free area actually? We're talking about it's not including the friction, but the free area is the area when you're not counting the blades. Also, they call it, uh, we're going to put it in green, that they also call it uh, daylight, daylight area. Okay, daylight area. Okay, yeah, we're going to put that as a daylight area. Or also they're going to call it as a see-through area, see-through area, okay, through area, they, yeah, there you go, they call it a daylight area, why, because that area is actually this, we're going to put this in green, see, it's in between the blades, we're not, we're not considering the blades, so it's nice to color it, see, maybe someone but it's going to enjoy this job. Sometimes it's coloring. It's very relaxing. There we go. So this is a two-way register. Yeah, we're coloring this. Okay. That's the free area. There we go. There we go. See? So in other words, light can pass through it. Or see through. There we go. All right. So that's the free area. And in this case, it's like the sum of all areas so you have area one two three four five until ten for example see this is three six nine ten so the sum of all areas between the blades and okay adding all areas between the fins or blades between fins or blades okay that's gonna be the free area but also again what is the difference oh the difference is this is in a square inch and the other one is in uh, a square feet all right okay so now but this af is not given by the manufacturer uh, everyone can call it whatever symbol they prefer but usually I mean, most of the time, AK is always going to be there. This, I've seen this in a lot of tables. It's AK value, effective area, no matter what. AF is not just for by the manufacturer. It's just like and other people could call it FA, free area, or area alone. This doesn't have a denomination. I, I'm just calling AF, free area, F as free. That's all. But this AK, remember 
it is by the manufacturer and it's in every table. AK is very important, all right? Okay, so now let's continue with another uh, concept. What is phase velocity? There is in here and also another factor. I don't want to make this as a carnival or a lot of colors. So we're going to continue with pink. So in here we have phase velocity. All right. So what is a phase velocity? The phase velocity is actually the velocity that is right here at the register. Okay, so we're going to put that in there. And then we're going to utilize uh, yellow. OK, so we're going to put in here phase velocity, phase velocity, velocity. All right. So we're going to start with the units. The units are uh, FPM, FPM. And then we're going to put this with green, with green. This is going to be the velocity or speed of air. Well, well let's put velocity at the let's put the group grd what is g grill what is r register what is d diffuser so in other words it's going to be very quick velocity at the <coughs> register or grill or diffuser so that's that that is actually the phase velocity the next one would be pressure loss uh, we're going to put that again in pink so we can see in here in the table we have pressure loss and that depends on the velocity as you can see for 300 fpm we're going to have a low pressure loss for 700 we have a higher pressure loss like 0 0.031 so that's what we're going to put in here uh, let's put in here nice with colors so pressure loss pressure loss the pressure loss is going to be in inches of water column or water gauge okay and then that's going to be actually the pressure or the pressure drop what let's put a pressure drop pressure drop uh, due to restriction right due to restriction restriction of grd grill register diffuser right why why is it a restriction because the air is not going just like normal it's not just it, it has an obstacle the grill itself is an obstacle for the air so that's why we're having a pressure loss and depends on the velocity the, the quicker you go the more pressure loss you're gonna have for example if it's 900 feet as you can see in here 900 F fpm you're gonna have more pressure loss 0 0.050 okay uh, we're going to go ahead for the next concept. So the next concept is throw. So let's put that in here with pink. All right. There we go. We have throw. What is throw? Okay. So let's put that in here in our table. Throw. Okay. Throw. Okay. So what are the units of throw? The units are going to be in feet. Okay. And this is very interesting and also very important, especially when you want to design throw registers. So the throw actually is the it's a distance, okay? Is the distance, okay, from the register, from the supply air register, because you're not having a throw for a return, right? So the supply air register or diffuser see register or diffuser okay or diffuser there you go distance from a register or diffuser where it meets and um, where it meets who is it gonna meet because when you're talking about a distance you're talking about two points so in other words, uh, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna leave, leave this pending. So I'm gonna make a graph in here. Let's make a graph very quickly. Uh, right here, yellow. Okay. So for example, if you have in here a side wall, and then you have in here your supply register, supply air. So this is throwing air. There we go. So when this throw goes, so it's throwing like this. There you go you need two points where are you measuring when when you're talking about distance you're talking about two points 
point one, point two. What is point number one? Is supply air. What's point number two? And this is very interesting is actually the velocity and that velocity we call it terminal so that's going to be the terminal velocity and terminal velocity velocity so in other words this is going to be the throw is the distance from the supply register or diffuser where it meets the terminal velocity okay so it when you have a table it's going to let you know what terminal velocity is so in, in in other words in here we're gonna have this what is the terminal velocity for all this throw you have in here for example throw of 700 let's talk about uh, 8 by 4 at 700 fpm your throw is 6.5 feet wait a minute throw is a distance between two points point number one is my supply air register point number two is oh here we go we have our terminal velocity the terminal velocity is 75 fpm in this case so we're gonna put in here 75 fpm okay so the terminal velocity usually also could be like for example say um 150 or 100 this is 75 but recommended is 50 fpm for comfort pur comfort purposes so if you want to achieve comfort it's 50 fpm but in this case this is 75 fpm all right so that's the distance and we're going to put the, this in here as throw so let's continue with this that's going to be the throw distance distance okay and that's the throw well i'm not gonna confuse anyone in here so let's just say throw that's the distance throw all right so one last concept is going to be the spread so we're gonna put this in here as a spread let's go put here a spread spread <laughs> spread no, not good a spread okay so that's gonna be in degrees and these degrees are gonna be like it's the angle okay so we're gonna put this in green and that's gonna be uh, maximum maximum width maximum width at terminal velocity a terminal velocity velocity and we're talking about terminal velocity is like going to be 150 175 but recommended 50 fpm so once we are so we have 75 fpm so once you have here so this actually is going to have going to be like this uh let's let's do like this like this like this see it's going to have an angle an angle and this is going to have a width there you go so that angle could be let's put it in here mm, it could be zero degrees depending on the blades right and that's gonna be 22 degrees or it could be 45 degrees that is the spread okay well i hope you enjoyed this video and also in other videos we're going to be talking about primary air secondary air and if you want if you have any suggestion any comment leave in the comments below all right uh, like the video share and subscribe thank you very much enjoy my channel